When you say create a state of nothingness, it's, it's good that you understand that that's a thing. You follow? Right. Okay. Allah exists as He is. Amanta billahi kama huwa, as we say in Arabic. I have faith in Allah kama huwa, as He is, His state of existence. And here's what happens. If you blink your eye only once in every hundred years, okay, you would miss everybody that died between one and a hundred. Let me say that again. If you blink your eye only once in every hundred years, you would miss seeing anybody born between one and a hundred. It does not mean that they were not born. It means that you would not see them because you blinked. Then, if you blink once in every 50 years, you only see people who happen to be born after 50. If you blink once and then kept your eyes closed and 50 years later opened it up, you'd only see from 50 on. And 50 would become one to you. Why am I saying that? Because throughout the scriptures, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when He, the Almighty Heavenly Father, wants to bring something into existence, He merely says to it, Kun, Faya, Kun. Be and Iya, it comes into existence. Like it says when He spoke of Mary and her immaculate conception. He merely said, Be and she, was, and she conceived. Okay? When He wanted to bring out the breath of life for man, He merely said, Be and man exist. Now, where does Allah exist? Allah does not exist in a state of where. Because the word exists as a whole cannot be a where. A where is a place designated from another place to and fro. You understand? Allah is al kulum the all. You cannot take from Him and you cannot add to Him. You cannot take from Him because where would you get it from if He is the all? You cannot I take from him, where would you put it? Because he occupies all places and spaces and time. So, he thought of becoming, thus you became. He had to create the vacuum to place you in because you were to have a dense body as opposed to just a spiritual body. You follow? So, what they really say when they created nothingness is that the, the Almighty took energy and slowed up its mood of vibrations to create matter. And at the spot where that first took place, the transformation, when you, when you turn down your radio or your television to the point where it's no longer a low volume, but you can't hear it, not that it's not there. You just can't hear it. Like I mentioned earlier, a dog can hear a whistle that you can't hear. The whistle is there. You just can't hear it. So that is a sign that there are, there are states of existence beyond human comprehension. Allah's starting point is the first stage of existence beyond human comprehension. You understand? And the spark where humans begin to comprehend is nothingness because it's void of time and space until Allah starts things to happen. That's what was before nothingness. Before nothingness was a blink that was so long that, was, that you, as the Quran says, was not a thing worth being mentioned. Based on the time of the universe, man is not worth being mentioned. You understand by that? That your lifespan, 1 to 80 or 969, is such a short span of time to the boundless universes until it's not even worth being mentioned, so they call it nothingness. Though it was a state of Allah's existence, who was, is, and always will be, and has created the different states that monitor down by mood of vibration, slowing up into different forms of matter, which you call electrons, protons, and neutrons, or cells and atoms and plasms and protoplasms, depending on the two different forms of life that he brought into existence, by merely thinking it into existence. The same way you think yourself into a cold and a headache and everything else. Okay? Okay. So how do we find out the answers to the question, who am I and what am I? Also, I would like to know why are they the most important out of the five? Firstly, human beings are suffering from 
identity. They know about angels, they know about Allah. <laughs> they even know about devils, but they never bother to know about themselves. And if you were to walk up to the average human being and ask him, what is he? You might get any kind of answer. From a man, to God, to an animal, to a human being. And the one thing that they are, which is mentioned in the scriptures, they all seem to overlook. If you would open your Bible, the Torah that was given to the Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wasalama, to the second chapter, the seventh verse, what does it read? The Bible translates in English, and the Lord, the Creator, formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Correct? No. When we look at this in the original language, things change. In the original Torah, in Lohul al Arabiya, we see Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim wa khalaq Allah al Illahu al Insan turaban min al Ard wa nafakha fa anfihi nasamat al Hayat. فَصَارَ الْإِنسَانِ نَفْسٍ حَيَاتٍ This translates وَآن خَلَقَ خَلَقَ Created If we look at the 13th name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of His attributes we come up with Allahu Al-Musawir If we look at the 11th name we come up with Allahu Khaliq. Two very important attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One is that He is the fashioner, which is a musawir. And the other is that He is the creator, al Khaliq. Now watch what the Bible is saying in the original language. There's a chapter Genesis, the second chapter, the seventh verse. وَأَنْ خَلَقَ اللَّهِ And Allah created the creation الْإِلَاهُ The creation or creator الْإِنْسَانَ When I told you about the word insan means nas from the word forgetful, neglectful and is in most cases referring to man in all cases, human being. It says there, and Allah, He created as the creator, and inside the human beings, to Rabban, from the dust, mineral ard, of the planet Earth. Wa and nafakha, and He blew or breathed, the anfihi, into His nose, in, in, be, in His nose, you see? Nasamat al hayat The breath of life. Hayat. The breath of life. Then it says, Fasara. So, Fasara. Man or this creature became something. Fasara al insan. Nasan. Hayat. And. So he became a human being, a nafsin, a spirit, hayat, that lives. Or as they say, a living spirit. Of course, your translation has the word soul. Correct? But it doesn't have soul in the scriptures. It has the word spirit. The word soul in Arabic is ruh. The word spirit in Arabic is nafsin. The same thing applies in Hebrew in case they say, well, the Bible was originally in Hebrew. Nefesh in Hebrew is spirit and Rahat is soul. 
so it doesn't change. When they say a person is breathing air, they say, Tenefush. Tenefush. To breathe air. Listen to that. And here it says that the Almighty Allah, Khalaqa Allah, Al Insan, Faraban, from the dust mineral art of the earth, for nothing. And he blew the anthony into his nose. The samat al hayat, the breath of life, for So he became al insan, a human being, nafsin hayat, a living spirit. So the question of what is a man is answered right in Genesis chapter two, verse seven. What is a man then? He is a living spirit, a nafsin. Does the Qur'an, you ask, back this up, being we are Muslims and we should study or put a lot of reference on the Qur'an? And my answer would be, Taba'an, of course. If you open your Qur'an to the 15th chapter, to the 29th verse, <laughs> the truth is beautiful. We'll read it. It says, so when he completed him and breathed into him of his ruhi, he ordered him to fall down to him, meaning Adam, and to worship him. It's telling us about the creation of Adam, if you read the whole chapter 15. And it speaks about when Allah Ta'ala created Adam, and it's got a very important point. You see some words match. But is there, but, so, is there, when, the way to who? So when he had completed him, completed Adam's body, he did something the Quran said. Wa nafakhatu. See the same word from the Torah? Nafakhatu. He breathed, be he, into him, be into him, into Adam, men ruhi, from his soul, not his spirit. <laughs> the Almighty put into man his soul, and man became a living spirit. The Quran is backing it up here. Fakahat lahu. Implying here. So he is to fall down. Ka'ad. Fa'ka'u lahu. Fa'ka'u lahu. So he is to fall down to him. This is telling the devil, Iblis, to fall down to him, lahu, to Adam. Sajidina. Sajidina. From the word sajda, to prostrate. And as we know from the story of the scriptures, the devil refused. And Allah cast him out. The point is here that the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Torah, which is backed up by the Holy Quran, that He created man and made man a living spirit. And He did this by breathing into Him. This is a very important point, which is backed up in the Bible. Even al Masiha. The Messiah, Isa Ibn Maryam, Jesus the son of Mary, galactically known as Sananda. He himself, through his disciple John, speaks about the light that lighted every man that cometh into the world. We'll find it in St. John, chapter 1, verse 10. It says, Can I feel the alam? He was in the world. وَقَوِينَ الْعَالَمْ بِهِ And the world came into existence by way of him. وَلَمْ يَعَرَفُهُ الْعَالَمْ But they did not know about him. Now Christians will right away tell you that this is talking about Jesus. That he was in the world, the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. <laughs> but we all know that everybody knew Jesus. 
The Romans knew him, the Greeks knew him, and so did the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees and Benai Israel. All of them knew who he was. So they cannot say he was in the world, the world was created by him, and the world knew him not. Because everybody in this period of time in St. John's knew Jesus. He was not someone who was not known. He was somebody who was very known, even to the point where they wanted to take his life. They got to stop making things up. Now, if you go back to the ninth verse of St. John's chapter 1, they say, The light is the true light, which lighteth every man, as they say, that cometh into the world. Or, Kana and Nur al Hakif, Allavi, Yuniru Kulli Insana, Ata illa al and this was a nur, the light, al-haqiqi, the real light, the true light, al-lavi, which, uniru, which illuminates kullu insan, every human being, ata, who comes illa into al-alam. <laughs> now we know that al-masih, Jesus, the Messiah, son of Mary, came into the world as a man. But the Holy Spirit was his next son, his spirit. He had a Holy Spirit. But he came into the world and the light, a nor, from the heaven was in him. Who is the light of the heaven? The Holy Quran teaches us if you open it to the sixth chapter. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Begin all things in the illustrious name of the Yielder, the Most Merciful. Alhamdulillahi alladhi khalaqa samawati. Hear the same word, khalaqa. Khalaqa samawati wal arda. Which translates, Alhamdulillahi. All gratitude, Lillahi, is for Allah. Allahi, who it is, which is Khalaka, the Creator. Remember in Genesis, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, when he said, And God created as you translate in your language, well, it said, Wa Khalaka Allah in the original language. That Allah and Elohim is the same for the Hebrew. Allah, Allahumma, Elohim, the same. And Khalaka created the same. The same sound that babies make before they speak any language called gurgling to you. But here in the sixth chapter of the Holy Quran, the first verse, it says, Alhamdulillahi alladhi khalaka samawati wal arda. The word samawati means the galactical heavens. And wal arda means and the planet earth. Then it says, Wa ja'ala zulimati wal nur. And he made of it the darkness and the light. The Almighty Creator of the heavens and the earth created the light because he is who anor samawati well order. He is the light of the heavens and the earth, which light the same light that lights every person that comes into this world. He was in the world in the soul of each person as their spirit. The world knew of him. But the world did not know him. <laughs> when you saw Isa ibn Miriam, Jesus the son of Mary, El Quran backs up that he had Ruhu or Ruhu Allah with him. He had the soul of Allah with him. When you saw Jesus, he said, When you see me, you see the Father. People turned that around and said, See, Jesus said he was God. <laughs> he didn't say that. He said, when you see me, you see the Father. Now, how could I possibly be Allah and say to you, when you see me, you see Allah? Me and he are two different things. He said, when you see me, you see the Father. For I and the Father are one. How is Jesus and the Father one? Very simply, because the Almighty said that he blew into man of his spirit, 
and man became a living soul. Which light? The Bible St. John said. That same light, that true light, with light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Simple. There's not a human being who is not in the image and after the likeness of the Heavenly Father. I don't mean your nose and your eyes and your lips and your ears. Those would be idols. That would make you eligible for mushrik. I mean, in your heart, there is the light of the Father. The love of the Father for all of His creation. He, Allah, is the creator of the galactic heaven and the planet earth. The light of all things. His light manifests through love. Many times, earth people ask me, has the heavenly Father given up on us? I've even heard fools say, is God dead? I've heard Reverend Swaggle storm up and down and say, if you're not a holy, holy Christian, you're not going to heaven. And give people a feeling that God has deserted man. <laughs> Your heavenly Father loves you more today in your devilishment than he did a thousand years ago when you were praying. Because he's more concerned with your condition. How do you know he has not deserted you? The day that children stop being born, that's the day that the Almighty has deserted humanity. As long as right in every second some baby is being born somewhere in this world, as long as there's babies crying, then there's hope. Now well, I'm always asked again, well brother, being I'm classified a racist for telling the truth, what about the white man? What about him? Does he have a soul? And does he have a spirit? Well I've pointed out by translation here from the original language that there is a distinct difference between Rufu the soul of the Heavenly Father, Wanessahu, and the spirit of the Heavenly Father. And I got a good test for most people, if you all are willing to work with me on it. In each one of the scriptures that I read, whether it was the Torah, the Old Testament, or the Injil, the New Testament as it's called today, or the Zabur, the Psalms of Dave, or El Quran, the Quran of Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam, all of them said the same thing. Be in that the Almighty blew his spirit in to man and man became or he blew the breath of life which from him was sold into man and man became a living spirit right but the key word is be in and uh, means with be means in or inside something now here's the catch I want y'all to work with me are y'all willing okay I want you to say, God, try it, don't be afraid, you use it all the time, say God, God, say it again, what, what are you, are you people afraid to say the word God, 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 say it again, God. now try, try to breathe in and say it, try to breathe in and say God, go ahead, try it again, You'll be trying forever because you can't breathe in and say God. <laughs> Try to breathe in and say Jehovah. <laughs> Try it. Try it. Say, say Jehovah breathing in. You can't do it. Try to say Om breathing in. They tell you to breathe Om out. Try to say Om breathing in. Try Buddha. Try Zoroastrian. Try Fahd Muhammad. <laughs> now watch this one. Who Allah alladhi la ilaha illa huwa. He is Allah and besides him there is none except he. Who Allah alladhi la ilaha illa huwa. He is Allah who is the creator. Nothing would exist if he did not create it. And he says in the Bible that he put his soul into man, into man, be he, and man became a living spirit. I'm doing that purposely. Now I want you, we tried God and Jehovah and all the different names that they use, Yahweh and your way. Now I want you to say Allah. Say it again. 
Now try to breathe that out and say it. <laughs> ya Rabbil Alameen. Allah is the stain of all the boundless universes. You can't blaspheme His name. Even if you want to, you can't. But He gave you the code of the scriptures. And in that scripture, He said, He blew His spirit into you and you became a living soul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you breathe in, say, Allah, try it. All the Sufis do it. Allah, Allah. Allah. You, now try to breathe out and do it. Ya Rabbi, you can't. Not God, not Jehovah, <laughs> not Yahweh, or His way. The baby says, ah, the first sound that comes out of everybody's mouth, regardless of where they are, and regardless of what languages is ah. You know why? Because if you were standing at the edge of a cliff and I pushed you, <laughs> Isn't that something for me to say? And I pushed you on your way down or on your way back to Allah. <laughs> you know what you would say? Who knows? That's right. Let me hear you say it. When people fall off cliffs, they don't go, God. They don't go, Jehovah. <laughs> they go, Ah! <laughs> If a person walked up behind you and frightened you, you don't turn around and say, God. You go, ah. You people, regardless of what language, oh Allah, you speak, be it Spanish, <laughs> Arabic, French, the baby will still cry the name of the Creator. Allah. La ilaha illallah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'un. From Allah you all have come, and to Allah you shall raja'ah, return. Why am I saying this? Because I'm trying to establish, A, that when you say any other name other than Allah, you are blaspheming. And you better believe that Jesus, the Messiah, used the name Allah. You believe that he was on the cross dying. Correct? Or at least some people do. Now, why is it I ask people, when he was supposedly on the cross, dying, why didn't he say, Jehovah, Jehovah, why have thou forsaken me? Why Eli, Eli? Why did he use the word Allah if that was him? Eli, Eli, Lama, Sarakthani. Eli, Eli, from Elohim in the single, my creator, my creator, or as we say, La ilaha. Illallah, your Muslims say, La ilaha illallah. Nothing would exist if Creator didn't bring it in. Jesus said it. As you say while he was on the cross. Illa illa. La masadakhani. My Creator, my Creator, why have thou forsaken me? We all know that's a myth, but this is what you claim. Then you ask me, like I said, about the white man and his soul. And I want you to turn your Bible to Joshua. The book of Joshua. And I want you to look at the fifth chapter and the first verse. And we're going to read a very strange incident. The book of Joshua, the fifth chapter, the first verse. Does anybody want to read it? Joshua, the fifth chapter. The first verse. It's going to astound some of you at this point. Because you for years called me crazy because I said the Amorite had no soul. Not to mention he just cannot dance. <laughs> that he has no sense of rhythm, which they call soul, or identify us, they call me and you soul people, or soulful people, or colorful people. They say, wow, look at them niggas dance. Look at them Puerto Ricans dance. Look at the rhythm they got. They can play four kungada at one time and be bata and kinko king and Look at this. And white people come to your party and you, black people, would stop and look at them and say, wow. They have no, you turn an American bandstand and have a big laugh. Watching them move the opposite of the beat. Music's going thump, 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 and white people going ba dip ba dip ba dip White people have no soul. They know they have no soul. And if the soul came from the almighty creator of the heavens and the earth, 
then where did they come from? And I'm going to show you here that they lost that soul because they did come out of our seed. The Bible is going to show you Joshua 5, 1. Somebody read. And it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites which were on the side of Jordan westward and all the kings of the Canaanites which were by the sea heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over that their heart melted neither was their spirit in them any more because of the children of Israel <laughs> now we got two tribes mentioned here and a place two tribes mentioned here the Amorites and the Canaanites who I explained a million times to y'all are the white race through the scriptures not through me you don't believe the Canaanites are white read Leviticus chapter 13 and 14 and they'll describe them the color of their hair their skin and their sicknesses and disease and the liver spots why 90% of them die of cancer and why they go around spreading all kind of diseases like syphilis and gonorrhea and spread them amongst our people integrating you people better stop mixing your seed with the devil. Abraham was told you can live with the Canaanites, don't marry them and don't mix with them. The Holy Quran separates us into tribes and families that we may know about each other. If we integrate, how are we going to know about each other? They got to listen. Did you realize that at a certain point it said, now we was at a place called El Urdun, Jordan. You know, Jordan is the same place where the Messiah, Jesus, got his baptism. Jesus was baptized in the Jordan. And when the Amorites and the Canaanites saw the Almighty perform the same miracle that he performed for Moses and the children of Israel before, he dried up the Jordan. A lot of people think he only did it once with the Red Sea. He did it again right in the Bible. When he dried up the Jordan for the children of Israel, what happened to the Amorite soul? What did the Bible say happened to it? The word they use there is Zabet. It melted Kulubihim, their heart. Why? And Lem. There is not Tabka remaining Behim in them a ruh, a soul, Bad Minjawa. After that, because of Bena Israel. That's the Canaanites and the Amorites soul. You have spirit written in English. In the language Arabic they have Ruh. Why do I point out Ruh? Because in the scriptures of the Holy Quran, when Allah Ta'ala speaks of breathing into man, He says, He breathed him in this is Holy Quran chapter 15, verse 29, right in the Arabic. He said, He breathed into him of his Ruhi. And then told the devil to fall down and prostrate to Adam. And he refused because he was men of kafirin. What is a kafirin? And where do we get the understanding of the kafirin? Well, before we can understand the kafirin, we have to understand what renders one a kafir, a concealer of the truth. The truth of Allah Ta'ala has come down to human beings and so did 200 fallen angels called Parabian, called Cherubim, cast out from heaven also into the earth. If you don't believe me, read Revelation chapter 12. And it'll tell you about Michael fighting against the devil and the devil's angels, and they have found no place for them at all in heaven anymore. Right in the book of Revelation chapter 12. So the angels that were cast out of heaven, which I explained in last week's class, has come from the seed of the devil as found in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 the seed of the devil, his family and I will show you in the Quran somewhere during the day where the jinn is a man I'm going to tell you, a man I'm going to use the Arabic word Rajalin a man but first we got to establish something and that is the jinn who has come down out of heaven and is on earth tormenting man in the form of a man many times. The Quran reads in the 114th chapter the message to human beings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has six verses 
because this devil was destined to reside on earth for 6,000 years, one of his numbers. And his time is almost up, and he knows it. And he is panicking. He's running wild. He, find, he sees UFOs, as he calls them. We call them swooper. He sees UFOs every day, and he don't know what to do. There's wars and rumors of wars and nations against nations and kingdom against kingdom and there's famine and there's earthquakes and there's pestilence and the man is confused. He's looking for you to help him and you're confused. <laughs> but because Allah is Ar-Rahman, ar rahim the light of Allah is here. And we'll know the truth and it'll make us free. Listen what it tells us. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Begin all things with the illustrious name of Allah, the yield of the most merciful, which I explained earlier. Cool! Tell him this, Muhammad. This is the angelic being, extraterrestrials as you'd have them, speaking to the Prophet Muhammad, who was the comforter who came after Jesus, the Holy Spirit with him. And the Holy Spirit is the angel Gabriel. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. He spoke to Muhammad and said in an order tense, Tell him this, Muhammad. Cool! This is what man better do. Call, Aoudou bi Rabbil Nas. Call, Aoudou bi Rabbil Nas. Tell them this, Muhammad. Aoudou, the day better seek. Aoudou, protection. Bi Rabbil Nas. By way of the sustainer of all human people. Because he created you. You better stop seeking refuge in the devil and his ways in his computers and his economic strategies and his manipulations you better stop worshiping a beast who the book of Revelation chapter 13 when Jesus' disciples was telling us that we better be careful of this Satan who's going to be a man and he has a number and a number of the beast Jesus tried to warn people and that's why they wanted to kill him because he was warning people of the devil on earth not the devil floating around the sky he told them that Caesar was the devil. How did he tell them that Caesar was the devil? Because what is opposite the Almighty but the devil? And when he told them, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and unto the Lord what is the Lord, what was he telling them Caesar was then? The devil. But you today are living in a Roman Empire, under Roman rule, under Roman laws, under Roman custom. You even call yourself Roman Catholic at times. You have roamed, all right. You have roamed off of the path of righteousness and are paving a way for all humanity to help. Because remember, you all are one soul of many spirits. You all must be raised to save your kind. The Almighty, out of his generosity and compassion, has merely requested 144,000 people if we can redeem 144,000, that is not a lot, then you will be spared. Then you will re-enter the garden of paradise. But if we can't redeem not even 144,000, which is right in the book of Revelation, gowned in white, living in the image of the Lamb, we can't do that, then there's no need. He said, tell them this, Muhammad, Awudu Birab bin Nas, that they seek protection or refuge in the sustainer of man. Of course, Muhammad says, men? Who? And the Quran says, Malik in Nas. He is a Malik in Nas. He is a ruler. The real ruler of man is not the devil. Oh, man has given himself to the devil to be ruled. The devil calls himself the ruler of the heavens and the earth. But, the real ruler of man is mentioned in the Quran when it says, Malik and Nas. Then he says, the ruler of man? How did he become the ruler of man? Ilah and Nas. Ilah and Nas. He is the creator of man or human being. Kul awudu bilab and Nas. Malik and Nas. Seek protection in the sustainer of all human beings. He is the ruler of human beings. Because he created human beings. Here he tells us, in the third thousandth year, we're going down from 
the beginning of the 6,000 from north. Kulahuti be that been there. To Abraham, Malik in there. To Moses, Ilah in there. To Jesus, Min Sheril Waswasil Khanath. Men from Sher, the wicked, evil, Waswasil Khanath. Whisperer Khanath. One of the names that Satan had in the beginning, Khanath. These people connive and whisper and scheme to kill the Messiah, Isa, Eben, Miriam, Jesus, the son of Mary. Notice the degrees. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas, malikin nas, ilahin nas, min sharil waswasil khanas. On into Muhammad. Al-Lavi yu waswi sufi suduri yin nas. Who is this whisperer? He is the one who whispers fi suduri yin nas into the hearts of people. He gets into their chest. That's what happened. When people wanted to conspire against Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they got around a scheme and they called him a fraud. He's a fake prophet. Don't believe him. When they wanted to conspire against Jesus the Messiah, they whispered. They got little councils and circles of people and they whispered and called him a fraud. And this would continue on straight past Muhammad to Adam and straight past Muhammad to today. When people want to turn people away from the Ansar Allah community, they sit around and whisper about Imam Isa. <laughs> See, I heard this about him, I heard this about him, you hear this, I heard that. He said, they don't come to him and talk to him. Forget his works, what he's doing, forget the books, forget the children, forget the people he's raising. Forget the fact that the devil can out-dispute anybody but Ansar Allah doctrine. All they do is shake their head when you tell them about us. To raise anger in the hearts of people against their own saviors. That is their job. But you know what the scripture says about that? The scripture says, Blessed is he who is persecuted after righteous name's sake. <laughs> right? For his is the kingdom of heaven. So if they don't call you names and call you brainwashed and stupid, you better be careful. They're going to persecute you after righteous name's sake. They accept the standard Anglo-Saxon church. But the Baptist church and the Holy Name church which is more black oriented, they say those are fanatics, they're some kind of a cult. But Billy Graham ain't no cult. Reverend Schrager could run up and down the stage with throwing the Bible up in his hand with no respect, sticking up under his arm, he ain't a cult. But a simple little Southern Baptist church, they gotta become some kind of cult. What fools these mortals be? So he whispers into the hearts of people. And who does he whisper from? He whispers from Min al Jinnati when Nath. Min al Jinnati when Nath, the Quran says. He whispers from him by way of the jinn and people. And the jinn, as I explained before, is the devil, old Satan, called the beast, mentioned in the Bible. He gets into the hearts of men and has these men doing his bidding. Has them whispering and causing dissension and even killing people in his name. There are people out there that would kill you for the devil and swear that they've done the right thing. That's how dangerous it is. But the most valuable thing that man has is the gift of a living spirit from the Almighty, which is what he is, whether he accepts it or not. The truth shall make you free. Tells you right in the scriptures, says, من له أذن فليسمع بها. As for him who has an أذن an ear, so let him hear by way of it. Or as you say, he who has an ear, let him hear. Why did Allah say that? Because he knew that there'd be people that are summun bukmun ummun, deaf, dumb, and blind. You can jump up and down, scream, tell them anything, and they still won't believe. You understand what you are? You are a living spirit. You got your spirit from the soul of Allah. He blew of his soul into man and you became a living spirit.
spirit you have now regressed from being divine which was a supreme being now let me get this straight man is the supreme being the heavenly father is just supreme a being is a thing now Jesus was a supreme being so was Moses, Muhammad and you a being, a supreme being but Allah Ta'ala is El Azim ain't no being added on there the problem is you don't know that there's a word in Arabic for being and that word is Ka'in a being Allah El Azim means Allah is the supreme it didn't say about El Azim Ka'in, supreme being you are a being that is supreme because you have the spirit of the almighty in you that made you a living spirit and you have the flesh of the earth shaped by the hands of the angel that made you a being a thing the Quran says that man was created from thin from dust, from, from mud, from clay you dropped from your divinity from a supreme being now you are just a human being, El Insan and then you dropped from a human being to a Rajalan a man and when you get on the other side of being a man <laughs> you become an animal again but the funny thing about the word animal is that the word animal is the same word for life again very strange Hayawan means animal and Haya means life when you get on the other side of being a supreme being the last stage you get back to is an animal and that's what the supreme beings have dropped themselves down to animals you've got to work your way back up to your divinity in order for you to be worthy of heaven in order for you to sit in paradise amongst the angels again you must earn this and so come through discipline and prayer and the ultimate which is so difficult for us is loving one another and love somebody as much as you love yourself you have been listening to a live question and answer session with the most outstanding teacher of this day and time Dr. Malachi Z. York on live TV. Also available in this tape series, are you a seraphim or a cherubim? The signs of the end of the world. Who is Melchizedek? The mothership. Who and what are you? The fall of Satan. Did we lose the covenant? 200 fallen angels. What are human beings? Cashless society and many others. Look for these tapes at your local Holy Tabernacle Ministries bookstore or write to the Holy Tabernacle Ministries. Post Office Box 4490, Eaton, Georgia, 31024.